Leia here from LeiaFirstSight.com. In this video, we'll discuss the what and how behind the alkene reaction mechanisms. In this video, I'll take you through the halogenation of alkene mechanism. We'll start with a simple 2-butene and focus on the concept of the reaction without worrying about stereochemistry or chirality. If I bring a halogen, for example Br2, near the double bond, Here's what you need to understand. The pi electrons are very negative, and that makes this molecule the nucleophile. When it comes next to a molecule like Br2, what happens is the halogen that is closest to the pi bond is going to be affected by the negativity of the pi bond, and the electrons will be pushed slightly towards the other halogen. This polarizes the bromine molecule, giving you a partial positive charge for the bromine on the left and making this molecule the electrophile. This partial positive is enough to cause the pi bond to reach out and grab the bromine atom. The bromine will reach back with its electrons to attack the carbon and the other bromine atom will collapse, taking the bonding electrons with it. Given that I'm starting with an asymmetrical molecule, I can choose to place the bromine on either one of the two carbons that held the double bond. The second carbon will get the positive charge, making it the carbocation. Also in solution is the second bromine, which is now a Br-, and we'll look at that later. What I do care about is the fact that bromine, even though it's bound to the carbon and has a complete octet, is still very electronegative. So bromine will reach out with one pair of electrons and attack the carbocation, giving me the bromine now attached to the second carbon with a positive charge on the first. The bromine, still electronegative, reaches back and once more attacks the carbocation. Now this resonance happening back and forth is not something that you have to show for your mechanism. Instead you show your carbon chain and have bromine attached to both of the carbons, this gives you a bromonium or a bromine that has a positive charge. Now even though bromine is holding the positive charge, you still have a partial positive on each of the carbons attached to the bromine, and this brings us to the next step in the reaction. The bromide ion in solution is going to be attracted to one of the partial positive carbons, but if bromine tries to attack from the bottom, the side that has the other bromine, it's blocked by the bromonium bridge and it can't attack. Bromine instead is forced to come and attack from the other side of the molecule, breaking one of the bromine bridges and collapsing those electrons onto the bromine atom. This now gives me a final product where the first bromine is on the right and the second bromine to attack is on the left. Now ultimately in this molecule it doesn't matter because it is symmetrical, but the idea behind this reaction is that bromine is going to give you an anti-addition, meaning that the atoms will attach one to the top and one to the bottom of the molecule, and this has to do with the bromonium intermediate where the bromine forming a bridge forces the second bromide to attack from the opposite side. This concept will be a lot more obvious if I use a starting molecule such as cyclohexene. The pi electrons from the double bond once again force a slight polarization in the bromine molecule, putting a partial charge on the nearest bromine atom. The pi electrons reach out to grab that bromine, bromine attacks back with its electrons, and the other bromine atom breaks off, taking the bonding electrons with it. For my intermediate, I can go straight to showing that bromine is attached to both of the carbons that initially held the double bond, with a positive charge on bromine and a partial positive on each of the carbon atoms that are attached to the bromine. To make this a little more obvious, instead of showing bromine attached with two lines in the plane, I can show the bromine atoms with wedges showing that it's coming up or dashes showing that it's going down. In this molecule, they're actually the same thing because the molecule has a plane of symmetry through the center. So I will show the bromine coming up. The bromide ion in solution 
has the option to attack the top or the bottom carbon. If I number this ring, I'll put 1 and 2 for where I have the double bond. And now look at where the bromine will attack. The bromide ion has the option to attack both carbon 1 and carbon 2, but it can only attack from the bottom given that the bromonium bridge is sitting on top of this cyclohexane. If bromine chooses to attack carbon 2 from below, the bond holding bromine to carbon 2 collapses, putting the electrons back on bromine. For my product, I will have a cyclohexane with the first bromine in the up position and the second bromine in the down position. This type of cyclohexane is referred to as trans, given that the bromines are stuck one in the up position and one in the down position due to the anti-addition of the bromine molecule. We'll look at one final example, starting with propene, which is an asymmetrical molecule. As before, we get a partial positive from the polarizing of chlorine, and the pi electrons will reach out to one of the chlorine atoms, which will attack back, and the bond between chlorine will break, going on to the other chlorine atom. My intermediate will show the propane, with chlorine bound to both of the carbons that first held the double bond with a positive charge. And here's where we get the difference. Even though both of the carbons have a partial positive charge, I have a difference between a secondary carbon in the center and a primary carbon on the end. Now even though the positive charge is distributed onto both of the carbons, the fact that the secondary carbon can potentially form a more stable carbocation, the secondary carbon will be a lot more partially positive than the primary carbon. And since the secondary carbon has more of that positivity, the chloride ion in solution will be attracted to the more positive chlorine and attack at the secondary position. This attack will break the bond between the secondary carbon, collapsing the electrons back onto chlorine, and give me a final product, which is propane, with the first chlorine bound to carbon 1 and the second chlorine bound to carbon 2. I will be happy to answer any additional mechanism questions in my weekly review sessions, live, online, and from the comfort of your home. I also offer one-on-one -on -one private tutoring. Visit my website for more information, leahforsci.com slash organic chemistry.